Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my page. My name is uh, Vera Adel, and I'm a life and relationship coach, and I help a woman uh, which are having a relation or marriage with a guy from a different culture. Today's interview is uh, uh, one of my series where I'm talking with a woman uh, which are in the relation with a guy from uh, Arab culture, and my guest is Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for accepting my invitation. And of course, everybody is waiting to hear your happy story. Today it will be nice and happy story. So tell us, how did you uh, meet your husband? Sure. So I actually met him in Egypt. Um, I took a break from teaching and worked as an admissions counselor for a special international program. And so I was fortunate enough to be traveling to Egypt a lot. And so um, one of the groups was having like a little get together or whatever. And I decided to go and we met at the party and started hanging out. And one thing led to another. And now we're married living in Dubai. Oh, OK, this was very fast. OK, so first of all, when did you come to Egypt before? Of course, you have some information about Egyptian guys and Egyptian mentality. So what was your, uh, how did you go there? Like, what did you expect? Okay. Did you, did you plan to even to have some relation at the beginning? No, I just thought it was like a work thing and like, you know, see the pyramids kind of like the typical touristy stuff and things like that. And I never thought I would meet someone there. Um, it just kind of happened in a good way. And it's one of those things like, you know, I always go into something with an open mind. I didn't have any preconceived notions. I know, you know, be mindful of your surroundings and things like that. But, you know, I just kind of went into it kind of just expecting the unexpected. Okay. So you met him in Cairo or where? In Cairo. Yes. Where? In which place? Or it was disco or bar or what it was? It was a friend's party, so I'm in a bunch of expat groups, and one of them was hosting, like, this kind of, like, get-together, and so I went with one of my friends or whatever, and we just kind of started talking or whatever, and he asked if I wanted to go out for coffee, and I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> and so okay. then we started hanging out every time I would come to Egypt. Okay, so we are always, uh, okay, so, but before you get married, how long did you know each other? Two years. Two years, and after two years, you get married. And now you are married for how long? Since July of last year. Okay, nice. So, but uh, we are saying, like, there should be, like, some certain steps to be sure that the guy is serious with you. So how do you know that he is really serious and he is the one who is good? <laughs> Definitely. So, you know, with any guy, like, you... I knew that people said like, you know, in Egyptian culture, there's certain expectations. And so I kind of was like seeing like how he acted and behaved and things like that. And he did pretty much everything by the book. Um, I'm not saying each man is different. Um, mine is very Westernized, but also very old school in some ways. Like, you know, he asked my father's blessing and things like that. You know, um, he took on the res fiscal responsibilities and things like that. So it's one of those things that each relationship is different. Um, and I think in Egypt, it's one of those things that you kind of have to be mindful, but also leave some lead way because each man is different, especially depending on his class and where he comes from and things like that. Um, so it's, I'm, mine is very educated and things like that. So um, he has a very open mind in many ways, but in some ways he's also still old fashioned. Okay. Uh, so at the beginning, before you get married, did you have like a certain talk that um, he wants something certain from you and you want from him? Uh, you know, did you have this kind of talk? Oh, definitely. Um, he, he explained to me, you know, in their culture that it's the man's responsibility to, you know, there's this thing, a marriage contract, and this the man is supposed to, you know, provide the apartment, supposed to um, ask the father's blessing, give the, the girl a shabaka and things like that. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we kind of had to do our own interpretations of that. Um, but in the end, he kind of did everything by the book. Um, he, he gave me my shabaka, the apartment, 
and things like that. And when it came time to come to Dubai, he sponsored me and made sure everything was set up so that when we arrived, we could just start living and not have to worry about anything. Very nice. Very nice. And there were some things you were scared from the Egyptian culture. Yes and no. You know, you hear the horror stories and things like that, but it's one of those things if you really truly love a person, you know, and try to, you know, get to know them, you kind of pick up on things. Um, I'm very lucky that, you know, I'm not this gullible person like I think before I act. And so, you know, I urge any woman in any relationship, you know, to do your due diligence and research and things like that and, you know, be true to yourself and, you know, you deserve certain things and know what you deserve. And if that person isn't providing it, then they're not the person for you. Um, it's also one of those things. I, it depends on where the person is from in Egypt and kind of like their class and their culture and things like that. Um, some men, you know, are more controlling than others. Like mine is quite liberal. Um, he lets me, you know, go out with my friends and things like that. Um, you know, and if he ever has any reservations, like he's comfortable enough where he'll tell me and I'm like, okay, like I understand, but it's really not happened so far. Okay. Uh, is there anything you like a uh, witness or you had in, in, in general in Egypt, like uh, you didn't like, you must like point it like, this is really, I don't like the, this in the culture. Definitely the, you know, um, just the way sometimes they treat the women, like in the sexual harassment and things like that. And it's one of those things that I think it's their lack of proper sex education and their lack of interaction with the opposite sex where they genuinely don't know how to interact and what they see on television and movies they think is acceptable, but it's not, um, that's definitely one of those things. And then, you know, definitely the poverty and things like that. It's, it's very sad. And, you know, the street vendors, you know, you feel bad because like you want to help them, but if you help one, then the next, you know, it's like a chain. So it's like, you have to be firm, but respectful because, you know, these people are human beings. They deserve respect, but just be polite. Be like, no, shokran, la shokran, la shokran. Yes, sure. So you came to Egypt like you have been working. You had your own job, right? So you were not depending on, on your husband. Right. So I came for a month um, when the pandemic happened. Um, I came for a month from July to August. Um, and I worked temporarily um, as a nursery helper um, before going back to America to get the papers to come to Dubai. Um, and that's one of the things that I urge any woman, regardless of culture thing, is to make sure you have enough money saved for if, heaven forbid, anything would happen in your relationship, that you can be dependent on yourself. Because, like my mama said, never, ever depend on a man because a man could be gone in an instant. So make sure you have, you know, the resources, you know, value your education, value your financial stability. Just be mindful. And I urge any woman, regardless of culture, of who they're marrying, to be able to do. Yes, but unfortunately, this is not happening in many cases, as we know. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, that's the one thing, like, um, especially, you know, in Islam, the man is supposed to provide for the woman. But, you know, in modern times, it's very difficult. You know, everything is so expensive now. So, you know, it's it's easier to convince one of the more open-minded Egyptians than one of the more old fashioned ones, you know, to convey that, you know, listen, I can contribute, you know, may, let me pay this bill or that bill. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole thing, but compromise is a beautiful thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so tell me when, in which pa um, part of your uh, relation did you meet, uh, did you meet your, his uh, parents? So when I came in July, um, it was during the height of COVID and we were able to go to his village or whatever to meet his family and things like that. Um, and then I saw them again during Ramadan at, for the Eid celebrations. And then um, that was the last time I saw them, unfortunately. But hopefully, inshallah, I will see them again soon. So they were supporting your marriage? 
definitely the mo- his mom was very sweet and very open you know and the dad was very kind very respectful you know it's one of those things like if you're a good person it doesn't matter where you came from you know as long as you respect their son and you know are a good person then and inshallah it will be all okay of course uh because when you are saying that he is a uh, good educated and he is like having uh, he's coming from the good level the, sometimes these people they expect egyptian wife for uh, their son you know that's why i'm asking so uh, does he has any relatives uh, uh, what is the relation between you and them sure so we have a really good relationship um we you know he calls them constantly and things like that and when we go you know like for eat and things like that that they celebrated together um but they've been pretty op- unfortunately they don't speak english but um only a few of them do so you know he translates for us okay uh okay mm-hmm. okay thank you. it's okay don't Sorry worry about that it's okay now you are living in dubai you are saying right correct correct okay both of uh, both of you working over there and what's your plan like uh, you are planning to stay there or you don't think about it now um for right now we're really comfortable because the benefits are very good for us right now um we just have to kind of see how things pan out <laughs> excuse me sorry it's okay maybe you have some water near you pardon <laughs> Maybe you need to drink some water. <laughs> yeah, is it okay? I'll I'll call right back. Uh no, we stay live and uh, just go to bring the water. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. Just, Sorry. Can happen. Too much talking. If anyone wants to ask something, uh, just you can write it in the in the comment, and I will read it for for Mary. It will be nice, okay? If anyone to <laughs> like to know anything. Sorry about that. Don't worry. We are on. Uh, we are not in the national TV, so. <laughs> okay, we were talking about your life in Dubai. So you are saying that you are comfortable and you are just planning to to stay there, right? Yes, definitely. And um unfortunately my husband and I um just um got diagnosed with COVID, um uh, which was surprising because we were both double vaccinated. So, but the healthcare here like it proved that like they really care. Like they're taking it very seriously and that's kind of when I knew that this would be a great place to raise our kids because they do put people, you know, and their lives they're valued here. Like the the doctors and the hospitals are amazing. Um, and it, you know, the treatment here is on par with that of America. Um, and we have really, really good insurance, alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay. But, uh, are you feeling well and your husband as well, or what is your, symptoms? yeah, honestly, we, yeah, honestly, we didn't even know. So for both of our jobs, um, even though we're vaccinated, we had to go, um, for PCR tests, um, before we went back to work. Um, and so, um, yesterday, we got we took the test and unfortunately at night we found out we were positive um but the government's been very helpful like they contacted us um they said like do you need anything do you need a place to quarantine um they've been very supportive in our jobs as well um we're able to do it remotely which is very helpful um but they've been very supportive and honestly i feel like they're more supportive than what they would have been in the united states or even egypt Well, no, in Egypt definitely, okay, but uh, that when you say United States that's surprising, okay? So you say they are very well organized in that, right? Yes, very organized. Um they made sure that we had a place to stay, um that we had um if we need any medical attention, um and like they consistently check up on you to see if you need anything. Mhm. Okay, so now you are in quarantine for how many days? 10 days. <laughs> So okay. that's when you, the real test of the relationship if we could last 10 days in one room together then <laughs> you know i just saw like a couple of days ago uh, the what, what is your result from your quarantine and the, some people were posting the babies so let's see definitely <laughs> okay uh, 
I think you don't feel well or you're talking too much or what's going on. I don't know. Like, that's the thing. like my body, like, honestly, if I didn't, um, if, and this literally, I did not have this yesterday. It's so weird. Like, like in 24 hours, like, okay. <laughs> it's okay. I think, I think uh, I will give you last question because I will let you to rest. Uh, I feel you as you don't feel well. Uh, so tell me just like, your your relation is like really nice and uh, like really like you said from the book you are a lucky girl Definitely. you met this lucky Definitely. guy but what will be your uh, advice for the ladies which are coming here and uh, they met someone and they immediately like want to marry and they fell in love and they don't see any any kind of signs that this relation it will not work what Definitely is the make sure you thing? have a contract Definitely make sure you have a contract that protects yourself. Um, if you decide to marry, make sure you have a very strong contract that gives you permission to leave, um, allows your children your citizenship. Um, these are important things. And make sure like you, they have money saved where if heaven forbid they needed to leave, they could um, never give their husband their passports. Um, and kind of have like an, an escape plan. I hate to say that, but really have like a solid network for if anything were to happen that you could be able to leave in like a moment. Yes, exactly. I thank you so much. I wish you speed recovery. <laughs> thank you. I hope the quarantine you will spend nice and you will have a nice time with your husband and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.